top that has an eroded glyph, and they place it at 19 BC, but that's the latest possible. It might be as early as 236 BC, or more likely 39 BC. And because these are the various parameters that the erosion of the glyph and, and the dist and the, uh, and the and the dot and bar thing on it, but it's it's possible that the very oldest uh, long count date that we have comes from Takli Kaba, which is just a, you know a stone's throw from the Zafu. <clears throat> I actually believe that you know um, the reason why there's no long count dates found within the site of Zafu is because it was the cosmology that came first. In other words, we do have evidence that as long ago as 900 BC, this comes from the work of Marian Popano Hatch, that at uh, La Venta, the Olmec, uh, were noticing that the skies were shifting. They became aware of possession, okay? So becoming aware that the skies shift is not the same as calculating it accurately. That would have been an effort that took perhaps a few hundred years I mean, it takes at least 140 years of star uh, shiftings to uh, calculate precession. And the reason I say that is because the Greek astronomer Hipparchus discovered and calculated precession in the second century BC, and he was using star data that was only 140 years old. You don't have to be around for 26,000 years. You get a little piece of the pie, and then you know the rate, and you can extrapolate the full cycle. Uh, but anyway, um, I believe that once they realized that the skies were shifting, they, they realized that the position of the December solstice sun was moving closer and closer and closer to that, that dark rift in the Milky Way, which they mythologized as the Shabalba Bay, the road to the underworld. And they realized that at some future point, these things were going to align. They didn't know exactly when. They were working it out. But the cosmology, the belief system, could be put in place that at some future time the sun would line up with this place in the sky that I believe they mythologized as a rebirth place. There's a whole complex of imagery and symbols that revolve around the dark rift in the Milky Way where it's like the maw of the monster, it's the, uh, the gold ring in the ball game, it's the, it's the cave, it's the, uh, the crook in the calabash tree, and it's the birthplace. And you see this quite clearly in, in some of the linguistic examinations. But, um, oh, another reason to think that is because it's also where the crossroads is. The cross of the Milky Way and the ecliptic is right there at the southern terminus of the dark rift in the Milky Way, right where the, the sun's going to be on the solstice in 2012. And crossroads were traditionally thought of as places that demarcated the, quote, cosmic center. You see this among the Zoltzil Maya and how they use crosses. And their all crosses were also used as um, uh, portals to the underworld. And uh, so cosmic centers were also associated with the ideology of uh, creation places. So you have this creation place in the sky that the early Izapans, or later Olmecs, realized was going to be a focal point for this solar alignment at some future date. And so I believe that they got the sort of ideology in place first, and I think that happened at Azapa, and then the calculation that was embedded in the formulation of the long count actually might have come a little bit later on, and it might have been pioneered by like people at Takali Kabaha. Mythology and astronomy go together at Azapa. This is Azapa Sula 25. It's, it's actually, uh, depicting an episode from the, the Maya creation myth, and it's also astronomy. And uh, Seven Macaws, the Big Dipper, I can't go into a lot of detail on some of this, but Seven Macaws, the Big Dipper, here's Hunapuli, the sun deity, and the cosmic caiman is an early version of the starry deer crocodile, and David Stewart in his 2005 book on Palenque actually cites Izapa, Stila 25, as an early version of the starry deer crocodile, which in the classic period is associated with the Milky Way. So we have a lot of confirming evidence for this, uh, that this is depicting a sky picture. <clears throat> you know, and, and it, you know, of course the dark rift would be the, the maw of the Cayman, and here's the Milky Way. And, uh, okay, now I'm gonna run through some of the pictures of uh, uh, from Azapa. These are the carved monuments of Azapa. A lot of these are depicting the Hierophilic creation myth. 
And Izapa is an astronomical oriented site. So, you know, it's just astronomy and mythology is all over the site. And it was thriving between 400 BC and 50 AD. And uh, Garth Norman has done a lot of work on this site. Um, he didn't, strangely enough, look at the ball court. And it's very odd. Like, uh, in, in fact, even Julia Guernsey didn't look at the ball court in her book on Izapa. And, uh, and so it's been a bit of a blind spot, but uh, I was able to find in my examination of the Brigham Young University maps that the ball court at Azapa is lined up with December solstice sunrise. And uh, that has been the key that's helped me understand what the ideology is, is saying on these carved monuments. So it's basically showing how um, the creation mythology is sort of a story that's, tell that's working on several levels. On one level, it contains spiritual teachings, but on another level, it's encoding the astronomical process that culminates in 2012. And the way that works in the creation myth, briefly, is that uh, <clears throat> one Hunapu, the father of the hero twins, gets reborn, gets resurrected at the end of the creation myth. The hero twins succeed in vanquishing Seven Macaw and the other dark lords, and uh, because they're tricksters and they trick them. And uh, their father, unfortunately, had been tricked by the Dark Lord, and he had his head cut off. And, uh, and so the Hero Twins come along, and they, they uh, uh, vanquish the Dark Lords, and they, they succeed in facilitating the rebirth and the resurrection of their father, one Hunapu. And uh, so here he is, victorious, and he's standing in this canoe, and canoes could also represent the Milky Way. So actually what we have going on here, there's, there's other reasons for saying this, but I'll just, I'll just state it. Deities often represented astronomical features. And I believe that at least at Azapa, because of the confirming evidence there, that the father of the hero twins, one Hunapu, represents the December solstice sun, mainly because of the ball court's alignment with the December solstice sunrise and the other things going on in that, in that ball court. I'm not saying that that's how every Maya site everywhere thought about one Hunapu, but this seems to be sort of original uh, sort of ideation around this. <clears throat> so uh, this, this, this monument is actually placed in the northern wall in the middle position of the Azapan ball court. So ball courts could represent the Milky Way, canoes could represent the Milky Way, this monument is in the middle of the Milky Way, and I should say that the cross of the Milky Way in the ecliptic, where the solstice sun will be aligning in 2012, actually targets that bright bulge of the Milky Way that astronomers call the nuclear bulge because that's the galactic center. So I believe that actually, you know, this, this brighter part of the Milky Way where there's more bright stars in there and the dark rift is in there and the cross of the Milky Way in the ecliptic is right there that's where the galactic center is. So that we're also talking about an alignment to the galactic center. And that's another reason why often this work that I'm doing is dismissed as silly or something, because of course the light couldn't know where the galactic center was. But, you know, well, we have the evidence that, you know, the crossroads is targeting this place, and they thought of crosses as targeting, as being associated with cosmic center and all this stuff. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. I almost, don't even want to bring that in because it, uh, it, it causes so much uh, disagreement or something. But anyway, here we have, uh, uh, the, this, basically we have the December Solstice Sun deity with his arms outstretched, which by the way, the iconographers and archaeologists who examine the site of Azapa, they say this is a period ending measurement device, like gesture, you might say. Period ending, or beginning, period ending, period beginning. It's, it's what one of the, uh, the primordial Maya deities did at the creation event, you know. The world was created and they, they measured the cosmos, you know. They set the roads in place and put the string out and measured it. So that's a period ending gesture. It's the December solstice sun deity in the middle of the Milky Way. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. <clears throat> Same thing with Steel 11. You, here you have the solstice, you know, his arms are outstretched, father of the hero twins. Instead of uh, being in a canoe, he's in the maw of a frog deity. 
and again the maw of the serpentine frog snake deity jaguar um, I believe represents the dark earth and the Milky Way so it's another picture of the uh, alignment that happens in 2012. So the ball court is really the key. And uh, here we, here's the ball court here. Here's the throne on the west end of the ball court. Uh, this is really the key to understanding what they were thinking about at Azafa. Uh, a little closer in, um, you've got this solar head emerging from between two legs on the front of the throne. Back here, you can see a few stones. We'll get a closer look of these in a minute. Uh, I, they're seeding stones, actually. Um, that's what they're called in the archeological literature on the site. And they certainly appear to be places where people would have sat. <clears throat> Close up of the throne. It's, a, it's called the solar godhead. The legs or feet are broken off, but these are like, it's a birth image, in fact, Shamans or Maya kings that sat on the throne, they were sort of like symbolic birthers. The Maya king was responsible for sort of like maintaining the order of the kingdom. And to do that, they had to engage in shamanistic rituals which would connect them uh, with the cosmic center. A throne often had a cross on it. So, I mean, symbolically, even if there's not a literal cross on it, they still represent it as a cross and the Maya king symbolically occupies the cosmic center. And from that position, he, it's almost like he channels in the you know, cosmic energy or whatever in order to maintain the kingdom. That's the responsibility of the Maya king. So he's like a symbolic birther. Uh, Maya scholar Carl Taube has written about this kind of connection. And so it's no surprise that you have this birth image on the front of the throne. And if you sat on the throne, Here's the head. You look down the lengthwise axis of the ball court, and there's another monument over here. Right here in the middle of the ball court, that's where that first image I showed you, where he's like sitting in the canoe. So it's right in the middle of the ball court on the north wall. And so you're looking down the lengthwise axis of the ball court, and you know, here's the shed, the, 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 the shed with the, the throne. You're sitting there, and you're looking out this way. The ball court aligns with the December solstice sunrise position. Very, very accurately, very, very accurately. And I deduced this from the maps that you found in the Brigham Young University studies of Azapa. They had not explicitly stated it. I, I'm not sure if they even noticed it. But you could take those survey maps and do the you know azimuth thing. And that's what I did back in 94, and I figured out that the ball course lined up with the December solstice sunrise. And then I later went to the site and confirmed it. And uh, um, I think that's very significant. Uh, you know, one of the things is that, okay, so then you get this really kind of striking illumination of the, of the ball court, of the uh, throne. And, uh, it, okay, so basically what you have going on here is, is that the iconography of the sun head being born <coughs> from the legs on the throne reflects the actual astronomy that's going on over that way. So you got this parallelism going on between the actual astronomy and the iconography. In other words, the iconography is a statement that's stating the December solstice sun is reborn. You know, this is how you interpret iconography with the help of astronomy. More so than that though, the whole context of the ball court monuments. Because look, there's not just the throne, but there's these other monuments here, and there's actually another one here that uh, I don't have on this diagram. Here's the seating stones. So obviously also people were sitting on these seating stones out here. Here's the throne that's oriented this way. It orients the whole picture, you know? And I, I've, I've got critics, you know, that say, oh, well, there's, there's no evidence that that could be interpreted that way. But no, you have all this evidence that shows that it's oriented this way to the December solstice sunrise. And all these other monuments, like over here, this monument over here, it's, it's um, depicting the fall or the demise of a deity in the creation that named Seven Macaw. Seven Macaw must be vanquished before the father of the Hero Twins can be reborn. And the Hero Twins accomplish this. So this is a creation mythology context. And so these, these cycles and these rebirth processes that are going on are not just on the level of one year. It's on the level of the world age doctrine. 
And in the Maya creation mythology, you have a world age doctrine. They talk about the end of the, the world age of the wooden people and the world age of the clay people. And so naturally, we're talking about this larger cycle. And I believe that what they're actually uh, talking about, or the statements here, I mean, there's a lot of other evidence that you know I can bring, bring to bear on this, but it's basically about the fact that there's this convergence going on over the December solstice sunrise horizon that at some future date, the, sun, the position of the December solstice sun is going to line up with the dark rift in the Milky Way at the nuclear balls, creation place, all this kind of stuff. So that's what I mean when I say they could project forward that at some future time the alignment's going to happen, uh, but it took a fair amount of good sky watching and measurements and calculation before they, they sort of got the calculation. And then, I believe, I believe anyway, that they embedded it into the formulation of the long count calendar. So it's controversial, you know, I've, I've, there's lots of, uh, you, know, you know, good arguments for this, but that they actually positioned the long count in real time based upon this alignment that would happen for them in the far future.